Hello again, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to Frontier Pilot Simulator. If you love American Truck Simulator, if you love Euro Truck Simulator, if you like Elite Dangerous, if you like planes, this game, I think, is going to be the game for you. On a distant planet somewhere, they are doing a lot of mining and research and personnel transport, and they need pilots. And that is going to be you, or in this case, me today, as we transport goodies all around this wonderful island somewhere off in space. So if you like Frontier Pilot Simulator, it is available now on Steam. We're going to start a new game and take a look at this and see all the different craft that we have available to pilot. Again, we can cargo, uh, transport cargo and passengers and go all sorts of different places in order to earn money to upgrade our ship and eventually get one that is that big. So welcome, everybody. It's good to have you here. We're going to go ahead and uh, jump through the tutorial here. There's some basic tutorial stuff, but the first couple of missions, I think, really walk you through everything. So let's go ahead and without further ado, get started. So we're starting here at the uh, place called Bridgeport, and we're going to head over to the spaceport now in order to get some of our first jobs. And if you've ever wanted to do like a, uh, you know, like a, a private pilot simulator where you get uh, paid money to transport cargo around, then this is definitely going to be the game for you. Now, I'm playing Frontier Pilot Simulator with a keyboard right now, a keyboard and mouse, which is uh, pretty simplistic, not impossible, but I think it might be better played with a joystick or perhaps a, a controller, given the little bit of practice that I've had. So let's go ahead and land at our first destination here, and we're just going to see if we can drop right onto that pad, and uh, let's see how perfect we can get. I'm getting better. Not perfect, but uh, that, was pretty, that was pretty good. Well, little, little bounce there. Not too bad. All right. Uh, let's see. HR Plum. Great. You've arrived. My name is Plum. I'm the... Uh, leader of the Greenway, blah, blah, blah. All right, so essentially these guys are like Amazon. And on this huge planet, which, by the way, if you look around, really looks like uh, Norway or Sweden or something like that, or maybe Iceland. It is a large island in the middle of a, an ocean on some distant planet. They have a port, and they have different types of research stations that they need supplies delivered to. They need batteries for drones. They need passengers transported around. They need food and water. And this planet is absolutely beautiful. Again, looks like Norway or looks like Iceland, something along those lines. And there are volcanoes and lots of deadly things around. But we are going to transport some cargo here today and uh, see if we can make some money. So in the, inside that hangar there, we can purchase two other types of transport craft. One which is a medium size and one which is huge. Here we're starting with our smaller one. But we're going to start by buying some uh, advanced rations and transporting that over uh, to a different destination. We're also going to recharge our craft, which apparently is charged by batteries. But it seems like it uses some sort of a fuel. So maybe the charge is more of like a recharging with, with fuel or something like that. And very cool. I love to see the cargo loaded on manually like that. I really like that a lot. I wish there was a cargo transport simulator, and I guess this scratches that itch because uh, it's really cool to do fle freelance deliveries all across the map. All right, we need to sell them about 2.8 kilometers over there towards the uh, northeast, so we'll head over there very soon. But this game is very unique. There are ships that will land into the water uh, like from space, and then they will become actual like uh, boats, and they will come over to a port. There's also a spaceport here where the ships will come in from the atmosphere, uh, outer space into the atmosphere, and then dock here at this giant tower. And there's a lot of really cool things that happen. So if you've wanted to kind of like do a little transport simulator, this is a really nice casual game that also employs some uh, challenge to it. As you see here, I pressed uh, the V key, which brings up all the airstream and everything like that. And our ship is actually. Uh, handling much differently now that we've got a lot of weight on it so that's one thing to really get used to in the game is the uh, way that the airstream works differently uh, for example you want to stay clear of volcanoes but there are geothermal uh, vents that shoot up into the air which if you fly over them high enough you can actually use them to get up into the airstream a lot higher my uh, f piloting is not going to be so good here I think for a little bit it's gonna practice will make perfect but there's things that we can find around in the world too like samples uh, for the scientists and we can actually drop those off at some laboratories and at those laboratories, we should be able to uh, help them do research. As you can see here, I'm dropping a little too early <laughs> in front of the uh, landing pad, but this craft is not as powerful. We'll have to get some upgrades first, and uh, luckily I didn't bump into anything, so no harm, no foul, I suppose. And we'll drop that off here for 850 credits. The next craft I think we can get, uh, which is called the Ox, is the medium-sized transport. Uh, that's worth like two, like 20-something thousand, so there we go. And the wind, I guess, wasn't cooperating as much yet either. All right, let's center ourselves out here. This looks like a gigantic mine. They must be doing some sort of mining here, studying the uh, uh, the planet's core or different types of minerals or something that are here. So uh, let's go ahead and drop off our cargo, get some cash, and get out of here. We can also pick up batteries, water, passengers, and, of course, the distance and the weight of the uh, of the uh, cargo matters. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and recharge the batteries. Not the perfect parking job, but at least I landed it without any damage. Let's go ahead and uh, trade out those... Uh, trade out those 
rations there. There we go. We got 5,991 now. Uh, we can pick up G batteries, empty batteries. Let's go ahead and pick those up. So we're emptying the rations, the food that we had for the crew here of the mine. Let's just say it's a mine. And we're picking up some batteries now. And the uh, crane arm is grabbing that now. I'm going to put that into our, our ship. And I think that's really cool how you can actually see people and items get loaded onto the, onto the craft. Unfortunately, I can't change our camera view at the moment. But, all right. The uh, buying of the G-type batteries is complete. And I know we can drop those off somewhere for recharging. Uh, over here for 1,406 at Bridgepoint. Uh, or Bridgeport, they uh, purchased those for 1,400. Then now look at this. Uh, Advanced Colonial B2 rations now being purchased for 4,000 again. So uh, if you see that there, there's also water in need. We can swing back to the Colonial area, buy it for 850, and do this run again for even more cash. So now they're buying it for even more money. So let's get out of here. All right, so the weight of the cargo is a little bit much at the start. So when you first fly around your craft, it's a little difficult to start with. But once you've got cargo, man, it becomes even even more difficult. Um, looks like the wind's against us, too. So that, that always uh, changes. You can turn that on and off, too, with the, uh, the V key, which is kind of easy. And I think I see some samples down there, too, that we can pick up. I think those green things might be samples, but I know they're around there where you can just fly around, pick them up, and then drop them off for cash. It looks like there's a lot of wind breaking around the mountain. We're going to come in from the backside. Over there you can see the geothermal that's shooting straight up into the air. And that geothermal, of course, uh, will allow you to... Well, it could damage your ship, and it could also uh, get you up into the air higher if you need some extra lift. So with the, uh, medium, with the small craft, you can do uh, small jobs such as this. The medium craft, I think you can do more... Uh, medium-sized jobs or more smaller jobs. And with the big craft, it's all about the big jobs. Big pieces of equipment that need to be transported around. All right, we're coming into the backside of Bridgeport now. And we are heavy, baby. And we are burning through a lot of our fuel. We are at about, uh, what is it, fourth? We got about 552 on the, on the battery. Wind is blowing us to the left, so we want to keep that uh, monitored. Much easier to play this with a controller, I think, because you can control your rate of approach and descent a little bit better uh, with a controller. I'd say a controller would probably be e even easier than a joystick uh, because you get more precise control and there's a lot of buttons to press. But it would be nice if you had another crewman with you. All right, we'll just pop up over this. Uh, I guess this is a holding storage tank or something there for something. And we'll go ahead and drop right here and unload our cargo. I think we will need to be faced the other direction because the uh, cargo crane is just behind us. So let's first just land, so that way we don't uh, cause too much damage to ourselves. Bring her down nice and easy, right dead center in that landing zone. There we go. All right, that was probably my best landing yet, at least in terms of gentleness. All right, let's back her up and offload this cargo. Getting us some good money, we'll load with food again and go back over to Central. Uh, from, actually I think it's the, uh, not here, but over there at the spaceport that has food. So we'll fi find all sorts of different jobs. Not too bad. The, uh, craft looks really unique, too. It, it really does look to be realistic. I think if, if we did any sort of space exploration, or even if we, uh, had these craft in real life, I feel like this is the way it would look. You know, you'd still have your lighting systems and safety systems on board. So there you go. Alright, let's go ahead and offload our batteries there. Let's recharge our own batteries. And uh, the offload crane is taking... I love seeing that. I love the fact that it comes out of the back of the ship and drops there. And then the crane comes over. You know, somebody's controlling that. Or maybe it's computer controlled. And then it just picks up cargo. That's wonderful. All right. This is a little too heavy for us to car uh, transport cargo-wise. 4000 is way too much. But we got over $8,000 now. So let's go ahead and mark our next destination. We'll pick up the B2 rations for eight fifty, And we'll drop them off for $4,450. That's, that's some big money, baby. And away we go. All right, let's get out of here. Our ship is much more nimble. This is like what it's like to, uh, as they say in the trucking industry, we're, bob we're basically rolling like a bobcat right now. We don't have a trailer attached, so our vehicle becomes a lot more, uh, <laughs> a lot more nimble, easy to handle. It's almost, it's weird because it's a little too difficult to control this compared to when it's slow and when it's, uh, when it's heavy. So, all right, let's try to come in for the landing zone. And as I mentioned, I don't know if I did, uh, the hangar over to our right. Uh, is where we'll be purchasing and repairing our vehicles as needed. And if we uh, happen to crash, they will uh, replenish our budget. A neat thing, too, look at how all the uh, the, the craft actually uh, will will deploy its air brake and such as you're maneuvering around to take uh, use of the oxygen or the air or whatever type of, uh, I guess, gas happens to be in the atmosphere. 
Now, as I get with more practice, I'll eventually be able to land these things perfect. I think with the controller, you'd be able to do it perfectly. The controls, by the way, when you're taxing are a little weird, too. I've had it happen where, uh, as you noticed when I was reversing, the wheels seem to... You try to go one way, and it wants to go another. So it's a little, little tricky sometimes to handle. But let's purchase that uh, cargo, and let's deliver it again for even more money. Oh, man, I can't wait to make the 4000 That'll bring us up to about... Um, well, hopefully up around 12000 then. I, I hope. Actually, what was... I don't know what the delivery price is, but we'll, we'll get closer to 12000 And then we can get up, upgrades for our craft, too. So away we go again. And we need to go back to uh, Central. Which is... Uh, over that direction. The only problem about coming into Central is that you do have to fight around a, a mountain here and then come back from the other direction. So it's a little, uh, little tricky. It's a good thing for me that they never made roads to these areas. We'll go see the port and other things next. Alright, so we're going to try to zoom in from this way. Alright, coming into the trading zone again. I'm just hammering it on the throttle. We're just going to touch the ground again. Almost. <laughs> Ooh! Nope, I didn't touch. I came close. Alright, well, at least I'm uh, pulling a prank on the people in the tower. It's like, oh no, Raptor 1 is going down. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Alright. Well, practice will make perfect. Oh, wait, what is this? Captain, I urgently need to have to go to Nord. Can you... Oh, whoa, 1,500 credits from... Uh, oh, oh, this is a guy who wants on board. Uh, sure, left... Left alt plus one. Oh, this is a... Oh, he's over there. Okay, we can pick up that passenger and then bring him uh, for an urgent mission. All right, stand by. I'll pick you up in just a moment. Let me drop off this cargo. Okay, so we have an emergency passenger transport request. So let's go ahead and drop off those rations. Get fueled up. And I don't think he'll walk to us, so I think we got to drive down there. And then I'm just going to take off. I think, you know, protocol or procedure would dictate that we come back up here, taxi... Uh, to the uh, takeoff platform and then uh, take off, but yeah, forget it. All right, all delivered, all good. How much money do we have now? Oh, we have uh, one. Oh, we have eleven thousand, almost, almost twelve thousand credits. I wasn't, couldn't remember if the price would increase or not. But that's the cool thing: is that uh, prices will increase the more desperate that they are for the item. Yeah, the taxing here is really, it's really muddy. It just feels like you're driving through the mud instead of being on, like, an actual uh, tarmac or something like that. So driving, uh, I'm assuming we're doing this under battery power. All right, uh, open the lock for God's sakes. I'm not going outside. What do you mean? You are outside. You're literally in a spacesuit, sir. All right, so now he needs to go to where now? The port, was it? Passengers on board. Go ahead and press T. Well, he can't. He's not on board yet. There he goes. Oh, he wants to go to Nord. All right, so that's all the way up uh, up there. So that's pretty much right in front of us. That's a quick little jump. Actually, before we take off, I want to see what our next move will be. Uh, empty G batteries. They want water for 2,900. And uh, where would we get water? Available items is rations, batteries, drones. Oh, there doesn't seem like water is available anywhere. Uh, what is that? Bio-radar associated equipment. Uh, let's see. Protein rations. Bio-radar. Seems like the only thing we can transport right now is rations. Advanced colonial B2 rations. Uh, looks, oh, it looks like they're selling it for a really high price down there. Jeez. Yeah, I'd rather purchase it from the spaceport, actually. All right, let's get out of here. Here we go. I like how it gives you a little uh, reading, too, by the way, what your uh, damage is. Our wing is at 87%. I think there, no matter how well you fly, there's still going to be wear and tear. So, uh, you know, you're going to hit an airstream or something like that. I mean, all planes need to have maintenance, no matter how good the, you know, the pilot and crew are. So, ooh, we do not want to go over that. There's a giant volcano. We want to avoid that as much as possible. And then those uh, jet streams coming out of the ground as well. Wow. The landing zone is right there. All right, we're going to go ahead and circle around. By the way, this is too easy to drive now because this guy weighs nothing. So uh, now I have to get used to that again. 
Well, he weighs something, but... Paul Zonk is his name. It says, uh, 2 Nord, 152 out of 1 minute. What, we had 1 minute to transport him? I was busy narrating, my man. I guess I'm a pilot and a commentator at the same time. Well, regardless, my goal is to, uh, drop him off as safely as possible. Now, sir, if you could put your uh, train in its upright position and make sure your chair is up as well, greatly appreciate that. Make sure you check the overhead bins on your uh, way out. We're not responsible for lost or stolen items. Thank you for flying Rat Pack Air. I hope you enjoyed your small little complimentary crackers. All right, that should be it. Now, how do we trade him? Uh, is he going to get off? Sir? Uh, wait a minute, the landing zone is over there. Oh, you want me to drive up there? Are oh, you lazy? Deliver passenger. Oh, he wants me to, like, taxi up the roadway? Or is there another landing zone up there? Oh, well, with all these geothermal things around, I guess we'll, we'll just kind of stroll our way up there. All right, now we're a car. I don't even think we're supposed to be doing this. Also... In a world like this, you'd think people would stay to crosswalks or that there'd be underground... Oh yeah, look at this. Now it's swinging to the left for some reason. It's weird. When you make a turn and then go back to going straight again, the, the vehicle will, like, try... It. Maybe it's the wind. Maybe that's what it is. Anyway, let's, let's, go, let's, let's go up this roadway. Wait a minute. That's another person. Deli... Wait. Deliver passenger and then it says colonist able hearing. Is that another person pick up? There is a sample up there, too. Ah, oh, this is getting ridiculous. Let's just do it the easy way. Okay, so in order to make this more challenging, there are, like, uh, unofficial landing zones that you can land at, I suppose. Alright. Okay, well, this is about as close as we can get you, sir. Uh, let's see. Uh, good afternoon. I want to go to the spaceport. Oh, good. Let's go there. Come on board, sir. Okay, so note to self, then, we can land in these green zones, and we don't have to... I thought, perhaps, once we got to a zone, that they would just take a personal transport. There are there are cars on this world, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be surprising to see that, but... All right, well, let's try to do this one as fast as possible, then we'll get back to the, uh... I don't want to fly over those. I feel like it'd be dangerous. They'd probably cause damage to our ship. This guy weighs essentially nothing. So they really... Do they really give you one minute to fly there? Right, we'll drop this guy off and then... Uh, we'll go ahead and get some more fuel. Should be able to make it. Well, so far, so good. I'm, I'm having fun. The world is beautiful to explore. A little small, but I don't think that's a bad thing because you get multiple ships to explore upon. So I don't think it's really that bad. Why is our landing zone say 17.7? You want to go back to the spaceport, right? The spaceport's over here, sir. Where's the symbol that says where to bring him, actually? Colonist Abel Hearing wants to go to spaceport Atslan 1. That's this place here. But yet there it says landing zone. That's from a different marker that I made, but the distance isn't changing, which is strange. I think we need to land him over there. Let's land here, though, to get fuel. There we go. I think we can drop him off over there. Let me take a look at the map quickly. Okay, I don't have a marker on the map. But he did want to go to the spaceport, as he said. And this landing zone marker is still on there. Okay, that must be a glitch, then. Uh, we've arrived. Please unlock the exit. Oh, you just wanted to come here. Okay. Stand by. Let me just back her in. All right, sir. Welcome. And there you go. Perfect. Now let's get uh, fueled up. And we can grab some more rations while we're at it. Let's take a look. Uh, what do we have? $14,000 in the bank now. I think once we get to 20, we should be able to see a bigger craft. Uh, we can do another B2 ration run. I want something more, th more than that, though. Seems like the only thing that brings us more money is G-Type 
Oh, that's for... Oh, that's necessary items. Okay. I think we should just keep running food because we make 44... Or 40... Almost $4,500 from that. 4,500 credits. And everything else is like overweight limit or whatnot, so... You know what would be really cool is if we could haul multiple ones of these. Although I don't know if we'd get as much money. Well, let's make another delivery. So far, so good. Um, our damage is... We'll, we'll, we'll eventually have to return here, I guess. Worst case. So let's go ahead and take a look. Wheels are like at 81. Yeah, I think we're okay. Things are fine. Alright, let's return to uh, Central. Now this time, after all this... Uh... Wait, help me out. I've got a container in Nord, some mess with documents. Now I can't sell the goods. It has to be taken back to the spaceport for inspection. How much do you want to sell me for? What's the job worth to you? Alright. Now, knowing the lessons from before, I'm not going to disengage the, uh, the uh, throttle a little bit. And then we'll do the serv service drones container. I need to know the weight. I need to know specifications, though. Like, can we, can we uh, pick that up without too much trouble? I want to see a different plane altogether. So I'm saving money for upgrades. So we just got to do this the hard way, I suppose. Holy crap. Wait, did I... Oh, I couldn't tell. I touched down. I could... Whoa, wow, that was not bad. A little damage to the wheels. Like 2%, but I think that's just wear and tear. Because they want to take your money, too. It's a game, after all. They don't. They can't make it too easy. All right, that's another 4,000 for us. Bringing us up to 17,640. Dude, nice. I really... I want to play this with a controller now. This is not bad. And this would be even more enjoyable with friends to kind of, like, compete for jobs. Uh, let's go pick up this container he wanted. Service drones container. So that seems to be like a side mission. Or I suppose these are like random urgent jobs. Just like when we had to transport that one person. Um, so that's kind of cool. Although people people are not worth a lot of money. Uh, they are very easy to transport. So if you happen to be going from point A to point B with no cargo, you may as well bring a, a person along for some cash. All right, service drones container is there. How do I pick that up? I suppose we'll land at the main. Let's land at the main, and then we'll we'll fly over there. Or how do, how do I pick this up? Or can I just land there? Oh, I, I guess I can just land there. I was expecting it to be this giant thing that had to go under our craft, but everything so far has been able to be loaded into the hull. Alright, so to be honest, flying this craft has gotten very easy now for when there's no cargo. But when there is cargo, that's an oof and a half. There goes the, uh, the wheels. There we go. Alright, what do you got? Oh, there's your cargo. Can you load that? Oh, maybe I have to roll ahead a little bit. Maybe I have to back that up over this way. That thing is big. Dude, how much does that thing weigh? This is going to be the end of us, because I can't... I don't know if there's any mission details for this thing. I don't know how much that weighs. He wants me to bring it back to the spaceport. Okay. You also have to be, like, a bit of a truck driver. Like, you, you have to back in and pick up cargo. Oh, there we... Oh, we can pick up anything in the circle. And then it'll just suck it in? Or how does that work? Um, use service drones 100% does it say weight 2 tons for two, 2100 credits how do I pick that up enter enter doesn't work space nope don't want to do that tab key doesn't do anything uh, call service drones cities are marked as unavailable according to the okay let's press F1 and see how we can pick up random cargo Oh, here we go. How to pick up cargo and passengers. Press T. Passenger will walk on load. Oh, press U. Oh, picking up cargo is Y. Okay. Oh, we got a cool crane that extends out the back. Dude, that is awesome. That is sweet. I hope this thing doesn't weigh too much. Container loading complete. Uh, completely forgot. It's a hell of a heavy cargo. Be careful. Oh, now you tell me. Well, it is two tons. Which is definitely less than the four that we had before. We're going to go up real high here. We have ten minutes to declare those drones. Drag them over to the spaceport. All right, roger that. 
I guess we'll gain altitude while we're moving towards... We have 10 minutes. Where's the countdown? I don't see... Oh, hell. I'm not going to be able to go over these mountains. Dude! Dude! What? I'm not going to be able to pick these up. They are way too heavy. Oh, come on now. How were we able to thrust out of here before? Oh man, we're going to run out of fuel. Can I use these to get up higher? I don't want to take any damage. Oh, yep. Oh, we did take damage by going in there. Radar dropped to zero. Which I don't even... That's interesting because it's still online. So they gave me a cargo which may have been way too heavy for this thing. Uh, what? Cargo Spaceway CF-13 has completed landing in the Aslan Spaceport. P please keep your distance. Alright, we got 10 minutes to get into here, so let's find a landing zone at the port. Oh, we're going down, baby. We don't have enough fuel. We have fuel now, but... <laughs> oh, cool. We shorted... Is that us shorting out? Oh, I thought that was a cool effect for that. Are those fish? Oh, I thought there was a giant fish underneath. Ooh, avert your eyes from the screen. Did they... What? Okay. Okay. Right, we've gone down in the water due to super heavy cargo, but I couldn't tell what our uh, weight limit of our craft was, I suppose. Is it, uh, there should be a way to call uh, for help. What, what was the... Oh, yeah. Uh, delete emergency ejection. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, how do I get drones? Should be. I think if you hold R, you can get drones. There should be a way to get help, like to get towed. At this point, I think we're bone though, because that guy did not tell us the weight until later. I don't even think that was worth it. Oh wow, we actually fell to the bottom of the planet's uh, to the water. That's crazy. How do I? Um, do not make sudden movements. Keep inertia in mind. Watch the change. Starting engines, etc., etc. How to trade? How to damage and repair? Oh, here we go. It's possible to charge on the runway. It's possible to do repairs by calling a repair drone. Land and press M. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, there it is. Oh, good. Service drones are coming over. <laughs> they are repairing us. Maybe we'll be able to start off the water or something like that. So we need to get over here. I don't think we're going to... One, we have no fuel. But I think they can refuel us. Are you kidding me? Are we actually taking off here? Oh, no. This is this is FUBAR. We are taking uh, water, uh, water damage. Weak pilot talks signal receiving. What? I don't know what that means. All right, I think we're uh, dead in the water here because the engine we did get fully repaired, and it says fluid in the rotor. Time to restore five. Oh, I see. So like we're basically stun locked underneath the water. All right, let's press delete and see what happens. Find all aspects of the game. Self-destruction. Well, I don't want to do that. Can we just maybe ask for a tow? Your life and your ship are always insured thanks to the Federal Colony Support Program. Be careful, it's windy. Ah, so if you crash, it probably uh, teleports you back to uh, the spaceport at Slon. All right, well, that guy did not tell us the weight of that uh, cargo, and I actually don't know the capacity of each of these ships. They're, uh, you know, if you press F1 for help, it doesn't tell you that this initial ship has a capacity of, you know, X amount or whatnot. I think you might be able to go into the hangar and see that, but a lot of it's trial and error, which makes it a game, which makes it really fun. So that's fine. We, uh, I think we get our pl uh, our ship replaced, like, at no ex expense or at little expense, and then we can continue on with the missions. So those uh, drones are not going to be delivered. It seems like a lot of these um, side jobs that should be worth a lot of money because, like, they're kind of special, you know, missions and such, don't really give a lot of cash. It seems like... 
you're better off just being an Uber Eats driver, you know, doing Grubhub or, uh, you know, DoorDash or something like that by, like, literally going to the to this place, picking up uh, food and then transporting it over. Uh, look, oh, look, pff, they, oh, oh, darn, we lost 345 credits, boys. Oh, what a tremendous setback. However, will we make it? All right, let's see. What other uh, things are here? Mule class uh, rigidity. Mongoose engines with extra defectors. Power plus 30%. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Now, the weight on that is 873. Does that... I don't know if that actually... What? Oh, actually, this is a good time to look at other uh, ships. Oh, there's our ship. Nice. Look at how they drop it out with the hangar. That's really cool. And that music going on really feels like StarCraft, doesn't it? It's got that StarCraft space western feel. Let's go back in there and actually uh, purchase a new craft or see if we can. I think our future crafts are like, uh, maybe like 20, tw like 20 something thousand. Let's see what we can buy. And now it's raining too. Even if we delivered that cargo, it wouldn't have been that much money. I really wish side missions like that gave a little bit more cash. Like I mentioned, just delivering food just seems to be the profitable way to make money. Kind of boring, but short distances of big cash. All right, let's see what we can do for aircraft purchases. So press T to enter the garage, and Y to purchase selected ship. Ah, so look at that, we can get the AUX. Ship with variable sweep wing, two flight modes, two flight modes, maximum carry capacity up to 10,000 kilograms. Oh, this one, ah, this one has 5,000, up to 5,000. Wait a minute, the cargo that we were flying with was only 2,000. Maybe that's, the Scarab is what we're flying now. It says it has weight, cap carrying capacity up to 5,000. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Uh, long distances. I wonder if there's other islands we can go to. So there's the different uh, craft we can buy. This one's going to be 28,000. So let's go... Oh, press E to exchange your ship to the selected one. Oh, we can exchange for 5,000? Oh, I think that means we can... Bur uh, I think we can make a purchase on it, and then we can store it here for a different craft if we want. Okay. So there's definitely different craft in the game. And, uh... Though their carrying capacity seems interesting. That thing was 21... Uh, like 21 tons. Or maybe it was 2,100 kilograms. Actually, I'm not sure anymore. Let's grab another job, though. Since we're at the spaceport, we should be able to grab some more cash. Here, in food. Oh, wait, now we got... Oh, look at this. Finally, there's different stuff to deliver. Or to pick up. Primary paradasium, uh, work, uh, water, etc., etc. Okay, let's see what else... What, what else can we pick up? Available is the batteries, water and 50 liter bottles. Eh, it's not really worth it. Seems like delivering the food is just the best option just to switch craft. C1 marine fauna. Oh, they only have passengers, batteries, batteries, water, passengers. Goliath droid repair kit. Nobody wants that yet. Huh. So if we do like two more uh, food runs, I should be able to get an upgraded craft. Deliver a container. And, oh yeah, we'd have to go pick that up. Oh, that's uh, can't not recoverable. Oh, that's kind of cool though. If you crash, your cargo will be dropped. So if you crash on the way, you can pick it up and then bring it the rest of the way. And there's really no real punishment. Like 300 credits for losing an entire craft. That's not that big of a deal. All right, folks. Well, I think that is it for my first look of uh, Frontier Pilot Simulator. A very good game with a lot to offer, I think, and more if we were to see more of it. So if you want to see more of this game, let's get her up to well past 1,000 likes if you want this one to continue. Let's get aggressive and show support. I'd like to play this one more, too. So if you're really interested in it, let me know. We'll jump back and we'll test out some new craft, bigger craft, which I think will be really awesome. So I appreciate you all for your time and for your support. And, uh, you know, the only difference here would be a bigger craft with heavier loads worth more money. And I think that'd be a real big interesting thing. So, welcome to all the new subscribers. Thanks again, everyone, for your support. And I am out. I will see you all next time, hopefully for more Frontier Pilot Simulator. Show your support, and I will be happy to bring in more. You all take care, have a great day, and I will see you all very soon. Bye, everyone.